I am Carb Brother. I'm Chris Nelson, President of Carbo. Really excited to introduce a new Ruger PC carbine and Ruger PC charger muzzle brake. So same muzzle brake that we've designed for the PCCs all the way around from the Sub 2000 to the charger to the PC carbine. Works fantastic. It's been a huge hit. A lot of guys love it. Look at the reviews. People are running and gunning. It actually does something. So it helps keep this platform flat. Helps it shoot flat, staying on target repeatedly, round after round after round, staying as completely accurate as possible. At the end of the video, we'll do a quick little range shooting test, let you see how it performs under fire. Really excited about it. So in this video, I'll go over how to properly install this with the crush washer that it comes with now for the 9mm and soon to be for the 40. But for the 40, we're still rocking the jam nut, so it's pretty simple. You don't need a vise, but in this scenario with the crush washer, you do need a vise now and some soft jaws. So we'll get into that, how to install it on the charger, how to install it on the PC carbine, and the Gen 1 barrel, Gen 2 barrel. So Gen 1, I'm calling the one with the standard stock hunting stock configuration. Gen 2, you know, the full-on M-lock rail. So let's get on over to Tabletop, show you put these on. Parts needed for this build, A311 Stress Proof Carbon Steel Muzzle Brake by M Carbo. We designed this brake particularly for pistol caliber carbines in that it's gonna help keep the platform stabilized. That's the most important thing. You know, nine millimeter, 40, we're not worried about recoil, but the way it's designed is to help keep that platform shooting as flat as possible. So when you're putting numerous rounds downrange consecutively, you're not gonna get that muzzle rise, that muzzle flip. It's gonna help you stay on target round after round. So inherently improving the accuracy, really love what we did here. So these 45 degree ports are gonna help reduce that blowback, reduce that recoil, but we're focused more on how does it keep it stabilized. So it's keeping it stabilized, that back and forward motion, and then it's also keeping it stabilized with this vertical port here, reducing that muzzle flip, muzzle rise. So really critical features here to help keep it on target round after round, A311 stress proof carbon steel. Really love this awesome premium finish as well. Proprietary, but fantastic. Can't beat it, really love what we're doing here. Now all these brakes going forward are gonna come with a crush washer instead of a jam nut. Now we've gone with the crush washer, industry standard, makes it simple, universal across the board. And also it really does a much better job just ensuring that it's timed, ensuring that you don't have any gaps on the threads. You know, that was something guys complained about. So we've done away with that. All nine millimeters are definitely coming with a crush washer. The 40 cal, some of them may still be coming out with a jam nut, but jam nut's perfectly fine and it's not necessarily gonna give you an issue. It's not like you're gonna have space on your threads per se, it's just some of them did. So we wanted to go with something a little more universal, easier, and it does require a vise though. That's the only downside. So if you don't have a vise, you gotta get one, man. I mean, everybody's got a vise. You know, your grandpa's got a vise. You might as well get one. You're gonna keep it a lifetime and you're gonna use it all the time. So when we put this brake on, you see this little concave feature here, right? Depression, concave. That's gonna mate up to the back of the brake, just like that. And then this pointed feature here, that's gonna go against the barrel. So this is your crushing ability here. So you've got about 40 thousandths worth of crushing ability. So these crush washers can be reused. You know, you can put it on, crush it, and if you didn't crush it all the way, you can take it back off and then reuse that crush washer. It's good utility, universal. You know, if you wanna switch the brake over to another platform, try it out, maybe before you buy another one, whatever. Or maybe you wanna throw a can on instead, you got options. So it's not as difficult to take off, remove, and reuse. So precision CNC machined, A311 stress proof carbon steel, the PCC muzzle brake, designed for your pistol caliber carbines. Love what we did here. They've been really popular with the Keltec Sub 2000, the Ruger PC carbine, and also now with the PC charger. So really excited. We're gonna demo that here in this video, how to do it. Also gonna show you the first gen barrel on the PC carbine, as well as the second gen barrel, just so you have an idea of how to put this on. So for this demo, we're doing three muzzle brakes, and this is how you get it. You get the muzzle brake and you get the crush washer. Tools need for this build, an adjustable wrench or a 13 16 wrench. We designed the brake to work perfectly with four wraps of masking tape on the brake to protect the finish and it'll fit snugly right in that 13 16 wrench. A wire brush of some kind just to clean up the threads in case you got any kind of rock set or Loctite. Do not recommend Loctite, just doesn't have the temp rating that the rock set does. So you can get the rock set from us. Not absolutely required, but it's nice reassurance that you're not gonna have that thing come off. If you're not gonna be taking the brake off, over and over, maybe a good idea, just go ahead and throw the rocks it on there, set it, forget it, not have to worry about it. So 
It's got the 1500 degree Fahrenheit temp rating, red Loctite, blue Loctite do not have that. And this is removable like blue Loctite. So definitely a good idea for any sort of muzzle brake application. Gonna need your masking tape. As always guys, make sure you're in iPro. All right, so there she is, the Ruger PC Charger. Everybody's been asking about this, so really excited to finally introduce it and give you guys some good information. So we gotta go ahead and throw this muzzle brake on, see if it's actually gonna work, see if it's gonna do the trick for us for the carbine and the charger. So really excited, we're gonna go ahead and do that. First, let's go ahead and make sure these babies are clear. So we'll check them, you know, lock the bolt back, check the chamber, check the bolt face, check the magazine well. All right, little charger is clear. Now while we're at it, we got it locked back. Let's go ahead and remove this barrel because we're not going to need the whole setup to do what we're about to do. We just need that vise and those vise jaws to make sure we don't scratch it all up. So pull forward on this takedown lever and then you're going to rotate it. So I'm going to rotate it this direction here, pull right out, piece of cake. Now let's look at this barrel because that's the next question. Well, how am I going to hold it? You know, I can't get access to the barrel to get a good bite on that barrel. Now what we're going to do is set up in the vise right there on that aluminum handguard. Now what you'll notice, you know, this is something we had to certainly obviously test and make sure of, you know, it's aluminum handguard, steel barrel. That barrel is keyed into the handguard there. So you see that little notch that steps down and you may or may not be able to see. I hope you got your sunglasses on, want to turn up the light so you can see this. So you can see how that barrel, it sticks down and it's got a little notched keyway here. So the barrel is designed to where it'll fit right in this aluminum handguard. It locates in that little keyway. So it goes all the way through. And then you'll notice if you look down underneath, there are screw holes there. So there are some socket head bolts that actually hold it in place. There's three of them. So one there, one there. And if you flip it around, there's one under the spring assembly here. So can't see that, but you may be able to see, let me try to give you a good view. You can definitely see it there. I mean, you can see two of them right there. So those two holes, that's where the actual bolts are. So it's nice and solid one piece. So you don't have to worry about any flex or anything like that. So we're gonna vise it up good, take off this little thread protector and get to work on it. Now, thread protector is easy, all right, comes right off. You will notice we don't have them because we lost them immediately. <laughs> New guns come in and things disappear. So the O-ring's gone. You don't need that. It's just for the factory OEM thread protector it's unique to Ruger, so don't worry about it. You're not gonna keep it on there when we put the new muzzle brake on. So just put your thread protector and that O-ring in a bag, keep them for a rainy day. This is all we're gonna need, clean threads. So we're definitely gonna just clean up the threads, that wire brush, once we get it all set up in the vise. So there's the PC charger barrel, ready to go. Needs a muzzle brake. This is the Gen 1 style PC carbine barrel. So you can see this is the early configuration, kind of that hunting stock configuration. So it doesn't have that M-lock rail that the new one's got. And I'll show you how we'll do this. We're just gonna vise it up on the barrel because that's the most secure place to get a good bite and hold on it. So we're gonna do that. And we've got a good exposure here to access it. And then the new model key mod rail for the PC carbine. So we're gonna go over that too. So we'll go ahead and we'll you know, clear this thing. We'll take the barrel off, same concept, you know, chamber. Bolt face, magwell, this baby's clear. We got it locked back. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove the barrel, pull forward on that takedown lever, just rotate up, and pull straight out. There we go, so we got the barrel. So we're gonna take the barrels over to the vise and we're gonna go ahead, get set up, you know, take thread protectors off, clean the threads, and we'll go ahead and put the muzzle brakes on. Real simple, easy, straightforward, just rinse and repeat process, no brainer. All right guys, we're gonna kick it off with the charger barrel first. So you can see I got the threads right up here and I want to get the vise, you know, clamped up nice and tight as close to the work area as possible. So, you know, we've got these jaws on here. I'm just going to push them back so I have a good idea where that vise is clamping and I'm going to get it to clamp right up here near the front of that handguard. So like we reviewed already, you know, you saw how it's nice and secure and it's locating, you know, the handguard and the barrel are, you know, pretty well integrated together. So that's you know very important. We wanna make sure that it's good and solid. We don't wanna have any sort of flex or twist as we're doing this. So we're gonna go ahead and clean up the threads now. You can take your brass bristle brush, you know, would be the best idea. You know, it's not gonna damage any of the coating or anything like that. But you know, if all you got is a wire brush, go for it. But if your threads are clean, you're good to go as well. You don't need to worry about that. So we're gonna just take a little bit of rock set, you know, put a dab or two on there. It's just kind of good thread insurance there. You don't have to worry about it backing off on you. 
And then we're gonna take our crush washer. So you got that pointed end right there. You know, it's facing up right now and you got that concave recess. So that pointed end is gonna go in towards the barrel like that. And then we're gonna take the muzzle brake. All right, notice how we got the flat back here. So we're gonna be just threading it right on that flat against the crush washer. All right, and you can see how it's, well, not even close to being timed right now. So we're sitting at 180. And this is actually predicament I've seen before. It's not a big deal, but you know, you could go ahead and just run it that extra 180 degrees, get it timed, or you can go the full 540, the 180 turn plus another 360, but you're gonna be completely crushed on that crush washer. So that's the maximum amount of crushing travel you can get on your crush washer. So just for demonstration purposes, I'll go ahead and crush the whole dang thing. Take our masking tape. You know, like I said, four wraps will get you in there perfectly for that 13 16. So there's one, two, three, four solid wraps. All right, so we're good there. You can kind of compress it down. It's nice and hand tight, so now we just grab a wrench. All right, so now we're gonna start our rotations. 13 16 fits on there perfectly. So with this crush washer, you know, you'll feel it start to bind eventually. So it's starting to bind a little bit. All right, you just back it off a hair. You're just kind of relieving the stress there on the crush washer, you know, so it's a good practice as you feel it get really tight. You know, that's when we're gonna back off just a hair. All right, kind of relieve some of that tension. And you can also put a little grease in there. You know, I definitely probably could have done myself a favor and added a little, so it's crushing away. Back it off, we're not quite there. All right, so we've got about 90 degrees left of rotation before we're perfectly timed here. So we wanna make sure, you know, we're backed off because we're not backing off anymore. All right, we're going all the way from here. So we're gonna do our full 90 now. And we're gonna go for one stop here. I mean, you can stop and pause, that's not gonna hurt anything. And what I'm about to do is, you know, we got that cut right on the top of the brake. And obviously the masking tape, a little difficult to see. You could also, you know, write with a Sharpie on there. Might be a better idea. So I just give myself a little marker there to see where I'm at. It's hard to tell with the masking tape. So if you got a level, you can use that. Just make sure the barrel's level in the vise so you can see that it's level right there. So then I'm gonna throw the level on the brake and that's saying it's level. So we're good to go. So at this point, you know, I can with confidence take this off because it would be a pain to have to wrap and unwrap all day long. You know, this is a pretty quick process. You know, taking the tape off seems to be the most time consuming part of it, but that's it. Now just grab a little CLP and we're gonna clean up that brake, get all that residue off of there. There's not a whole lot. Oh yeah, beautiful. So she's all perfectly timed, looking good, completely crushed on there. You know, best way to do it. Simple, straightforward, there we go. All right, so the charger's done. So now we'll just pop her out of there. You know, vice jaws are definitely helpful. You know, these are great, they're magnetized. They just snap right on there. A lot of contours and different features there for different barrels or really holding anything. Just protects, you know, the hand guard. So if you don't have vice jaws, you can use a towel, but a towel's not really quite rigid. So you may get a little flex in there. So it's not ideal, but it'll work. So you can see we're perfectly timed there. You know, the crush washer is completely flush. You know, this one is crushed completely. So remember that you got 540 degrees of rotation and then you're maxed out. So you couldn't crush it any further, but it's on there solid. I mean, there's no slippage. Plus we got the rock set as well. So good little extra insurance. So PC charger is done at this point. All right, so this is the newer style PC carbine aluminum M-lock rail. So you're gonna see this on most PC carbines. All right, we're gonna cover the older style, the one I'm calling the Gen 1. I'm calling the new style the Gen 2. That is not an official term, but just made it up. There we go. All right, so just so we can quickly differentiate between the two without having to explain in detail. All right, so what you'll notice is the rail itself is actually bolted together much like the charger. So you got three bolts in here. It's got the little keyway where it locates into the aluminum forend, barrel forend, one solid unit. So we're able to actually put it in the vise just same way as the charger. You know, we're gonna get it up near the working space, get a good clamp, good bite on it. Got our vise jaws in there protecting 
the actual rail itself. All right, and this time I'm gonna actually make sure I'm good and level. I like using the level, it just kind of helps, you know, quickly get through the process. So I'm gonna make sure it's level before I start. Not quite. All right, so we're pretty level. Now I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it on down. Now obviously you don't wanna tighten it so much that you cause damage to your rail. I mean, you know, it is aluminum, but it needs to be good and secure. I mean, we don't wanna have any flex. Having that flex is we're really tightening and crushing, you know, that steel crush washer is gonna cause a problem. So steel on steel on steel. We just wanna make sure it's good to go, solid base, no flex. All right, so we're all set up. We're gonna take our crush washer, same concept. You know, that pointed end that you can see, you know, that raised portion, that's what's gonna to go towards the barrel. That concave is gonna be facing, you know, the back of the muzzle brake. So same deal, little concave pointed end going towards the face of the barrel there, right up here. All right, now we're gonna take our muzzle brake. We're gonna put a little grease on it this time, just so we don't forget. So I got a little synthetic grease, PTFE, trying not to get it in the threads, just kind of on that back side. It'll just help while we're crushing it. You know, a little lubrication, that's all. All right, and then I'm gonna throw some rocks set on there. You know, good little, I say a couple drops, but I always use a crap load. It's not gonna hurt anything. And it's got the removable properties of blue Loctite, so you'll be fine. But the temp rating, far superior, 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. You can see where we're at right now. I mean, we're nearly timed if you're to take just a quarter turn. Well, that's not enough. We're gonna do a full turn and make sure we get timed that way. So we already know 540 degree rotation, so we'll be just fine. We can go ahead and run the full rotation and get her timed. All right, do our four wraps of masking tape. One, two, three, four. I mean, it's worth it. I know it's kind of a pain to have to use tape, but if you want a scratched up brake, it doesn't matter. I mean, you can just run it as is. You don't need to tape it up, you know, and it's not necessarily like you're gonna scratch it. It's just each their own. Do what you want, but I recommend the tape. I think it's worth it. All right. So once you start to feel that bind, effect you know and it's also a little easier on the barrel too so obviously it's all located way down here so barrel sticking out you might see a little movement in the barrel as you're rotating it's not a big deal just we'll back it off you know each little turn just to make it kind of a seamless process here we don't want to put too much stress on it and definitely take your time with it I'm giving you the fast version here. <laughs> and that last rotation, remember, you know, we're not backing off. So we're going the full turn. All right. I'm getting close. I know I'm not 100% there yet. Just going to check, see if I'm still level. Still level. All right. Now I'm going to check the muzzle brake. Yeah, I still got more to go. Yeah, the tape could throw it off just a hair, but it's a general guide that we're going for here. You know, it's not 100% perfect. You can still eyeball it. We're just trying to save ourselves the time of having to remove the tape. So there we go. We're perfectly timed. We're level. Take our tape off, clean it up, and on to the next one. There we go. A little CLP or any kind of oil cleaning. You're good to go. Beautiful. So she's all timed, crushed on there, ready to rock and roll. So we'll go ahead and pop it out. All right, so we're all done here on the newer style M-Lock aluminum rail, so we're good. Now let's go to the older style. So this is the older style handguard option. Kind of looks like a hunting stock. You know, nothing really tactical much. I'm really glad they went away from this. It's not bad if you got it. I mean, we can all see the advantage. So to do this, all right, there's one screw right here on the handguard that holds it to the barrel. And take your 530 seconds inch Allen key. Pops right out like that. Everything stays contained, which is nice. So you don't have to worry about any explosions. Set your handguard down. So the takedown assembly is all contained there. You don't have to worry about anything jumping away or exploding on you. So what we'll do is get it in the vise. This just allows us to get the whole barrel in there and tighten it right up and get a good bite on it. Otherwise, the handguard would get in the way. 
Unless you had a smaller vise, you might be able to skip that part, but for the two seconds it'll take you, definitely worth doing. All right, so there's a flat spot back here that I'm using where the sight goes. All right, I'm just making sure I'm level before I start really tightening this barrel down. You know, it's just a gauge, just to make sure we're mostly level, mostly timed on that brake. Good and snug. Now let's get back to that muzzle brake. Same deal as what we've been doing. You know, make sure your threads are clean. These are all good. All right, we're gonna put some rock set on there. So we'll throw our crush washer on first. Just remember that pointed end, you know, is going on the barrel, you know, towards the barrel. Right back here, that depression concave end is facing the actual brake when we compress it together. You guys already know what you're doing. You already seen this twice. <laughs> all right, so we'll get a good amount of rock set on there. I always like P for plenty. And then we're gonna put some synthetic grease of PTFE right there on the back side of the brake. Just helps, you know, we're crushing steel on steel on steel and get those threads started. All right, so we're pretty much all hand snug at this point, just wiping off any excess grease. Throw my tape on there, four wraps and we're good to go. One, two, three, four, all right. Crimp it on there real good. Grab our 13 16 wrench. So we're basically at that maximum again. So we're gonna do a 180 plus a 360, so a 540. That'll be the maximum amount of crushing we can do. All right, but I'd rather be, you know, over tight than under tight. So not a lot of binding yet. It's kind of starting to, yeah, not really. So that would be timed per se, but it hasn't even really started to crush or bind. So I wouldn't really feel good about that, you know, just yet. I mean, you could leave it there, but that's not, I don't know, that doesn't feel right. You know, you still got more to go. Once again, if you got a Sharpie or something, you can mark it or put a little hole in there. All right, so back it off a little bit. We're almost at that point where we're gonna do the full rotation. Well, that's crushing real good. That grease does help too, makes it, Pretty much effortless. Here we go. All right, now it's really starting to bind. But we're nearly there, so we have to obviously commit. Not quite, wishful thinking. <laughs> All right. And this is a gauge. I mean, you know, worst case, you take the tape off, you look at it, retape it, but it does help. You might as well use the tools you got. All right, let's see if we're good to go or not here. You know, if you overshoot it, and that's worth mentioning because I was just looking at it and I wasn't sure if I'd possibly overshot it. And you know, another reason why it definitely pays to go slow. So if you overshoot it and you crush that crush washer all the way like we did, you're gonna have to use a new crush washer. There's just no getting around that. So obviously you can eyeball it and I'm eyeballing it, it looks pretty dang good, but I'm gonna get the barrel set again. I just wanna be 100% here. Obviously I'm doing it on camera, so it's gotta be perfect. So back here, I'm level and I'm level. So I'm level on the brake, there you go. So we're level back there. So level, level, we're good to go, man. So that's how we do it on all three. All right, so we're all back on the tabletop now. So for our older style with the hand guard, I'm just calling it the Gen 1 for sake of simplicity here. You know, turn it up right to where your takedown lever is pointing up. We're gonna take the hand guard with that bolt, stick it right into this threaded hole right here. Line it up, kind of feel it start to locate, kind of feel those threads. I wanna make sure we're all centered up there. So I'm just going backwards until I can feel those threads. All right, there we go. Perfect. And then we just snug it right up. Five thirty seconds Allen key. All right, man, we are good to go. So we're all done. Got a new muzzle brake on there. So Gen 1 style complete, and this is what I'm calling the Gen 2 style for the PC carbine. Perfect, so that was easy. So we can go ahead and put these back together. So I'll show you how to throw the barrel on. I'm sure most of you guys already know by now. Same with the charger, very basic, simple setup. All right, so let's put the PC carbine back together first. So we're gonna lock the bolt back. All right, we're gonna take our barrel, get it right at the 12 o'clock right there. So get those lugs kind of wiggle them in there a little bit, you'll kind of feel it start to take. So you got it at 12 o'clock and you just rotate it this direction and it snaps right in and then snap it down. So we're good to go on the PC carbine. 
new muzzle brake, awesome. All right, PC charger, same concept. We're gonna lock that bolt back and just stick our barrel right in and just rotate it and then rotate it down and we're good to go. All right, man, so we got a new muzzle brake on the charger and showed you new format, you know, how to put it on for the charger and for the PC carbine. Let's go see how these babies shoot. All right, guys, so go ahead and run 33 rounds through this little charger, see how she does. Pretty confident how flat it's gonna shoot, so I'm gonna shoot right by the camera. Hopefully I don't miss. Woo! Don't break the camera. Rock solid. This thing is sweet. If you don't have one, I feel like you're gonna want one. If you like the PC carbine, man, trade it for this thing. This is awesome. Great little package here. That is fun, I like that. Switch it on over to the PC carbine now. So, pretty used to this. You guys have all gotten familiar with it. Perfect. Flat, stable, that's the whole idea with the muzzle brake. Really appreciate it, guys. Hope this was thorough and helpful. Always appreciate a like, subscribe, share, comment. Let me know what you think. If you got advice, let me know if you got advice. I'm curious to know how many people got advice to do work on their guns. Now, if you guys want to see a full install video for the charger, give me a like, subscribe, and all that good, good little goodness. I sit at home and I watch this naked in bed, so I want to see if we got a good little like, subscribe ratio going here. And I'll get you this. I'll get you a full install video. So I hope you guys appreciate it. Looking forward to your feedback. Can't wait to hear what you guys get for results. Thank you, Car Brother, for all your ideas and your support. As always, happy shooting.